Wow. So this is what a gear shift in a Toyota MR2 is supposed to feel like. Right, it's table time. Yeah, man. I'm pretty stoked. I've wanted something like this for a while. Now then, YouTube. Welcome to a new world. A new camera. A new microphone. Which we'll be taking advantage of a little bit in a second. I'm going to do some testing. We've got an exciting video other than the obvious. I've got some new turntables. I've got a new hot plate. I've got a new fuel tank. Now, what we're going to do with all these new bits? Well, the fuel tank on the MR2, it's going to be an MR2 video because I've got a race next weekend, the final race of the season. It'll be my third race. Quite looking forward to it. So I've got a new fuel tank. That's because mine's dented and I've had a few problems with my fuel sender's not worked. I managed to get a fuel tank and a sender. I've got some shifter cables because obviously mine, if you've been following my shifter cables, not in the best health. So I'm going to change the shifter cables, change the fuel tank. I've also got my mate Dan has delivered on the tables for my alignment. So he's made me some tables. I've not seen them yet. We're going to go see them. I'll show you them. And uh, yeah, what I'll be able to do then is do the corner weighting on the MR2. I'll be able to set up the suspension all in my own time without having to borrow things from other people and any of that jazz. Really excited to check out these tables. Now, I've got a new camera, like I say, and I'm not, I've not really played with it yet, to be honest. There you go, look. It's one of these kind of cameras, just a, just a smallish one. Testing, testing, wireless mic. Right, so we'll do some little testing just quickly. I'll, I'll not take too much of your time up. We'll see what the engine sounds like. Hear that six cylinder, single turbo, two and a half litre, one JZ diesel rip. Oh, that was 70 in about three seconds, that. It's fast, this. Right, let's pretend we're doing reviews just for a quick 30 seconds. So the BMW E61 is, is a great car. It really is. It's uh, got telly, which, well, it's not really a telly, but it's big enough to be a telly. Right, so I'll get to the unit, and I'll see you there. Well, there's been a few changes here, you might have noticed, last weekend. So there was another E46 here, wasn't there? He's gone. So, I found a good space for a, a proper one, eh? Who's that there? Oh, oh shit. Of course it was, yeah. Got some new lights even. Only two, yeah. We've got another two to go up at the back after the eBay specials died. They died. These are fucking... These are Amazon specials, so I'm hoping for a little bit more. So we're going to be working on the MR2 today. I'll wiggle her out, get her on the two poster, and then we'll uh, yeah, do do some good stuff. Now these tables, Dan. Oh shit! So this will make more sense when we do it. It'll be tomorrow, but it'll still be in this video, no doubt. What we're going to be doing is raising car up, and then each one of the four wheels will sit on one of these. And each on each one of these, there is a little turntable, which was the cheapest I could find uh, without going from Alibaba. Uh, they were from you, obviously from China anyway, but we're going to get rid of this. This just unbolts. I don't like this. Don't need this. Uh, tire will go here. We'll take the pins out, be able to move it. Yada yada yada. These are all. Are they a meter, sir? Meters at the top, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so these are a meter high. About 50 mil. And about 50 mil. What on each foot? Really? All right. That's interesting. So, in order to try and simulate a flat floor. I asked Dan to put the feet on adjusters, which, which he has, and it's a, it's, a, it's a nutter. She's nutted. So each one of the four legs, obviously it'll take a bit of setting up this, but once we've done it and marked out left front and you know right rear and all that stuff, hopefully they'll be pretty similar to where they'll be. So we're going to do as best to try and simulate a flat floor. I'm not imagining we'll get it absolutely perfect, but um, actually having a flat floor is, is harder than you might think. And, don't forget, circuits aren't completely flat, are they? So, you know, we're not going to go, we're not going to worry too much. But this will definitely up the game quite a lot. So, thanks a lot, Dan. The white balance looks pretty good over here, thanks to those, thanks to those new lights. But I think when we go to the other side, we'll be back to yellow, like the DC5 headlights.
Right, I'm going to try and do a semi nice job of this. Now let me show you this tank. And when you look at it now, it's quite obvious that there's a big dent in it. But because the dents formed so well and so even, I was like, oh, that's probably standard, that. But yeah, when we compare it against this one, there's still a bit of fuel in it, mine, but yeah, she's flat, she's flat. So I'm going to paint it because I think I painted this one. Oh, someone's definitely painted this one at some point, or it's definitely not half as rusty as the one that we're putting on. So we'll try and make it look a bit nicer. Obviously, top sides, you'll never see that, but I will give it a paint. I'm going to paint with some proper nasty stuff. I bought this from a subframe before, and it's proper thick, like proper thick, yeah? It's not moving, is it? That's what the hot plate's for. So I remember last time I was doing this, and it just wouldn't move. I was like, oh, I need to get some heat into this. But we'll let that bubble a little bit. In the meantime, I'll clean up the top side of this. We'll do the bottom side while it's on the car, and... Uh, yeah, should be, should be golden. We'll do the cables in between, so we'll get this top painted, get the tank off, get the cable off, change the cable, and then put the tank back on. Come on, HD horse. Hey, up lads, get in there. Woohoo! That's my best hammer, that. He's like, I love you. <laughs> Not yeah. Shake it. Come on, Come on. Come on. Not having it. Yeah. Oh yes, that does look very nice. I know, I know. But this car's started reminding me again about how much of an old rusty piece of shit it is underneath the new paint and you know, well, yeah, just the new paint really, isn't it? So I'm getting the fuel tank off. I'm at the last stage. Old uh, Denton, Harvey Dent. He's coming off, and it's always a pain on this side. So I thought, oh, I'll try and do it nice, take this coolant pipe off. And uh, yeah, I went to undo this fastener here. Yeah, you can see where this is going, even without focus, right? Where is she? All right, I don't know where I put it, but yeah, the bolt snaps. Snapped in two, so but unfortunately, this isn't one that we can really ignore because you know, this is one of the coolant pipes. Just every now and again you get reminded about what a, what a crusty mess this car is. Old fuel tank. Let's have a look under here then. Crusty brake line fittings. I'll not worry too much about that. There's my car, look. How's it going? Oh, uh, first scratch on the camera. So the reason we have to take the fuel tank off to do the cables, anyway, uh, is some bolts, uh, some nuts let's say, just up there, which uh, hold the cables in place, which is real nice, thanks Toyota. And I think while we're under here, let's bring the old three-legged, she's a bit, she's a bit wobbly. Ooh. Someone reversed into her, it was me, knocked her, knocked her legless exposure. Have a bit of light please, don't fall. Yeah, there's just a couple of areas here. No, it's not really that bad, is it? Well, we'll rough it up and we'll, we'll gob loads of shite on it, eh? You might remember I had the uh, had the fuel tank off in a, in a previous video and we fitted some new parking brake cables, which, as you can see, they were obviously the best quality. Now, this one's stayed in, <laughs> but neither of the boots have stayed in for the uh, where it goes into the body. Nice. I'm going to be honest with you, I've treated the, the rust repair about as seriously as I would normally treat it, i.e. not very. But I'm just going to slap some paint on it. This, this floor, this, this here, this here. And there's probably a bit in the corners here. This bit's fine, look, there's nothing on it. Maybe a bit in this corner here. Maybe just rub that a little bit. That'll do. And then the shift cable's going to have to be tomorrow as well because I spent all the time dicking about. <laughs> and F1's on soon. I'm not missing it. Good weekend this weekend. More, more, more weekends. More F1 without Lewis Hamilton sounds really good to me. Don't know what you think. If you ever need a man to paint over rust for you, I am that man. <laughs> the Black Death. This is the MR2 race car, don't you know? Alright, so that's it. Tomorrow we'll finish it off. We're going to watch F1, yeah? Do a click. 
nice and early. Let's get on with it. I've started on the shifter cable, right? We need to get this done by lunch, really, so we've got a couple of hours on the tables before the race later. Hey, qualifying yesterday, but pretty good, eh? Hey? Maleficent. Well, I got the cable off. Unfortunately, I found another problem. So I got both cables here. This one's the new one. We'll have a go at focusing. This is the one that we're meant to be fitting. You might be able to see the problem straight away. Eh? So this is the one that's obviously a bit kinked and a bit a bit knackered. So yeah, you can see the kink there. You can see where it's clearly lopsided. Um, this was the problem. This was a Donington issue. This is why I couldn't get it into reverse and why fifth became a bit obnoxious towards the end of the day, right? So, I went and got a, another cable from a, a reputable breaker, I might add, and I, I doubt he's done this on purpose. He seemed a nice guy. Um, but yeah, these things happen. So, if you look straight into the hole of this, you see, hey, what's going on there? There's, there's not a lot, right? But then look into the hole of this one. Uh, yeah, we're, we're completely missing the bush in there. We've got some of the rubber outsideies, but the girth of the bush, yeah, she gone. So, although this cable, oh, see the, the, the whole point of changing this, I could, I could get my gears fine, but the whole point of changing it is to try and have some more accurate shifts, so I'm not, I'm not misshifting as much, because you know, I had a mischief cost me a couple of places at Alton Park and it was horrible and the chances are at uh, Donington, now that I'm on the UK spec gearbox, I'll probably only be using third and fourth gear so it might not be an issue. But I may want to go into second gear for the first corner and if I do want to do that, if I do end up thinking, hey I need to go into second gear here, you know this box tops out about 65 I think in second gear so maybe, maybe you will want to go in second in there and go up to third out of it. So if, if I do want to do that, then I definitely need this to, uh, to be right, otherwise we're going to get issues. So what I'm going to try and do, because you know, we've got nothing to lose, have we? I'm going to try and see if I can get this bush out and get it into this one. <laughs> All you old boy mechanics got to start admitting, I'm getting pretty good at this. 17mm hex heads um, bit there, you know, for the old... Volkswagen Audi drive shafts. Come on, let's put some focus in. Uh, 24 mil. I've not released it yet, I got a bit excited. I'm sensing that we've been successful. Okay, so we got the bush out. Stupid like a fox. You can have this one for keepsies. Well, I'd be lying if I said that wasn't a lot more difficult to get the bush back in. I had to do quite a bit of rubbing and warming her up first, uh, getting the bore prepped, and then had to grease the hell out of everything before I could get um, the, the bit back in. I had to do loads of uh, vice kung fu with various techniques, and uh, yeah, got it in without damaging anything. I was worried that I might end up damaging the cable by having it in and out of the vice so much. But now I am pretty happy with that. If we can focus, I can show you one more time. If you focus, and yeah, you can see all the, the lovely schmoo all over that. So yeah, we've got a good cable now. So we've we fixed the, the issue that we had. Uh, get the cable back on, then we can get the fuel tank on, do that last bit of uh, painty paints, and uh, yeah, she'll be good to go. It really shouldn't but it really does feel like I've fitted a short shifter. <laughs> it's, uh, wow. So this is what a gear shift in a Toyota MR2 is supposed to feel like. I thought they were just meant to feel all saggy and shit, but apparently not. Um, yeah, if, well worth investigating if your cables are knackered. If you've got a sloppy shift, I just presumed that was how they were, but that's, a heck of a lot tighter, well happy with that. Might just add that I did an excellent job on the installation. Everything went smoothly and didn't dingle the, uh, didn't kink the cable again when it went back in, which is nice. Even put a little washer 
on top of it. I'm not sure if they're, uh, can you see it? Not sure if they're meant to have a washer, but mine never did. So we're going to be testing the old focus and zoom at the minute. But yeah, I stuck a, oh, she's going. I stuck a, stuck a washer on there and uh, yeah, it feels real nice. So I'm chuffed with that. Hopefully no more mischiefs. Certainly no more excuses for mischiefs. Unless I've just like knackered gearbox and that, which is yeah possible. This gearbox did crunch into seconds, so you know I did. I had this one in the race in Silverstone. This gearbox. This is the one with longer, longer ratios. I've got a plan for the gearboxes. It involves, in fact, if, if you're a Toyota man, if you're a Toyota man who, who plays with gearboxes and stuff, I need, I, I need some advice. I need to know what tool I need to get the fifth gear off. Because I've got a plan for a box in my head. I've worked out the ratios and stuff. The pinnacle of a 1ZZ box it's going to be for sure But I need to get that fifth gear off and there's the set I bought off Amazon Which wasn't a cheap cheap set it was still like 30 quid or something which is oh, not pretty not expensive But I can't get fifth gear off so if someone can let me know Who's you know took a gearbox apart for a Honda uh, for a, a Toyota What because you need one that's real strong but it's got real small teeth to get under Under the gear so once I get fifth gear off then I can get all the gear set out and everything and Put the gears in what I want. I've got a. It's all up here. I'll share it with you, of course. But it's all up here. It's gonna be. It's gonna be fucking sick. Well, I've never had an accurate fuel gauge on this car, and I managed to fix it a little bit. But I'm guessing what I tried to fix is. Yep, yeah, it definitely has. So you see the nice new filter at the bottom. These cars don't have a traditional fuel filter. They have it in the tank here. Oh, this might be too under unless I can wiggle waggle it. You see the uh, the box there that's just dangling around? That's the fuel sender, so that tells the instrument cluster how much fuel's in it. And yeah, there's probably a good reason why mine was all over the shop. It's uh, it's fallen off again. So this thing, the fuel goes up and it sends a different electrical thing to the cluster and it tells how much fuel in it. So if that's just dingle dangling all over the shop, like mine was, then you're not going to get any fuel. Now I have clipped it on before, but it's fallen off again. So I need to investigate why that's happening. Well, I fixed it, just about. It wasn't clipped in right. I learned from the one from the other tank that it was clipped in and you have to kind of slide it to, to well, I'll tell you how to do it, right? To get it out, you slide it up a little bit. Was it up or down? I don't know. Was it up or down? It might have been down. You slide it one way anyway. right? Because the way I got it off was just prying it off. And I did the same to this side and I, I broke a little bit and I was like, oh shit, boys. But yeah, it's really, it's on there properly now. So there's a little tang at the back of it there, look. Which clips in. And it holds it all secure. So I can carry on with my new fuel filter now, which I was, I was half thinking, oh shit, I'll go to that one with working sender, but unknown fuel filter. But now I've got a clips in properly sender and a new fuel filter so yeah nice one it's a mighty fine fuel tank you've got there mister right two things first off fucking transmission jack clocked me one when I was putting fuel tank back in but it's back in and it's dinted fucking some parts all this yeah it's not too bad and it's in a weird place really I don't know how the fuck what do you think? I was just cleaning it up before dabbing some of that Gobex on. Okay, it's a right chunk as well, isn't it? Not just a little, not just a little one. But that's not good, is it? It was uh, not too bad, really. Just, just you know, getting ready to paint over the rust. You know how it goes. But yeah, I'm fucking. It's like a couple of blows. That it's almost like. I don't fucking know. I mean, it's. It's not in a place that's going to give us any problems really, not like the, the problems that I felt I was getting before. Although that was a lot to do with the sender as well, but yeah, yeah. it's going to be an improvement either way. <laughs> yeah, just, just a bit annoyed. So there's a blow to my fuel tank and I've had a blow to my head. Right, it's table time. Don't know where the time's gone, the morning's evaporated, but... <sighs> I'm not going to be able to do all the corner weighting and the alignment and everything that I kind of want to do rushed. So I might have a, a separate video on the corner weighting, but then there's no point in doing the alignment if I'm going to 
stick about with the ride height through the corner weight and into the so we might just do today getting the tables level and then I'll have a full day on it on Thursday. I've got some got some time off the old work, time off work coming up. So let me show you what I'm doing though, because these turntables that I got, let's say I got them from a company called Rally Rally Design, I think. I think it was that one. But uh, yeah, they're, they're the cheapest turntables I could find in the UK. And whether that's a good thing or not. I mean, they, they do the turnings and stuff, so all gravy. But there's there's one thing that I don't like about them. They've got like a, a gauge on the side of them. I don't mind the numbers. It's just this thing I don't want. So we're going to take it off. But it's not as simple because this kind of acts as a spacer in between here to, to make sure that's going all right. So I'm going to chop them here somewhere and then bolt them back on. It could be a while just trying to get these level, to be honest, and getting the head around where they need to be on the feet as well you know not just obviously it's no good just having one level and then leveling the next one they need to be level against each other otherwise waste of time and like i said that's why we've got each four of the feet um, so there's 16 nuts to adjust <laughs> but you know we'll do this once hopefully and it'll be worth it and then we'll not have to do it again although you know, given that each car's got a different wheelbase and track, then they're not going to be in the same place every time, but hopefully they'll be roughly right. This is the floor that we're dealing with. Not the best, not the worst. But yeah, I'm going to modify these all, take take this off, cut them off at the back, and uh, yeah, that'll uh, lead us on to getting some levelling done. And I think there'll be some, some techno and stuff, some lasers. Well, if there was any doubt that they would take the weight of an MR2, which obviously there wasn't, but yeah, I'd put them on just for the crack. Not leveled them off yet, but just, yeah man, I'm pretty stoked. I've wanted something like this for a while. Yeah, Dan made these for me. They've, they've taken the weight, they've took the weight. I got these, I'd say the cheapest turntables I could. <laughs> they were uh, about £180 a pair still. So, you know, not, not nasty, nasty cheap, but cheap enough to be a nice price well it took me two months to buy a pair like to buy a four of them like but nice price Well, I've dicked about for about an hour and I just keep knocking them off level. <laughs> I've got just one and then it knocks them all out, pretty much. I need to put some more thought into what I'm doing. And the floor is definitely a lot less even than what I thought it was. And on the on the rear of the car, there's a crease here as well where the, where the cement, where the, uh, where the cement, where the concrete meets. Is it cement or concrete? Not sure on builder's word for this. For, it's concrete, isn't it? Yeah, it's got to be concrete. Cement's what you put in for bricks and that, isn't it? Yeah, we'll go with cement. Um, no, concrete. Uh, it doesn't fucking matter. See the line here, right? That's right on there, look. It's it's overlapping them. Um, so yeah, that's that's been giving me a little bit of pain, but luckily Dan put these feet on it, which are like, I don't know, three inch square or something. Um, so yeah, we've got we've got like enough surface area to, to overlap the crack, and yeah, I'll just kind of just kind of keep keep progressing. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll get somewhere like uh, level soon. Otherwise, I may be doing this indefinitely. Right, I think I've now spent just about as long setting these tables up as I probably would have spent setting the car up. So definitely. <laughs> Right choice to try and not squeeze it all in one day. I've got somewhere, I've got somewhere. I, I, I'm, I want to say happy with where I am. Um, that laser level, once I've figured out how to do it properly then, so much easier. Let me show you, show you what I've been doing and you can either laugh or you can think, oh, that's clever. Like, because I'm thinking at the minute, oh, that's clever. So uh, one thing that I was doing, which was wrong, let's say, 
Um, well, I've, I've reset, basically I reset what I was doing and just went right, start again. And I was using the laser level, but I was putting it on one of the tables and then trying to cast the beam out and no, 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 you don't need to do that. If we want to test that these are all at the same height, this magnetic boy here, he can just go on the ramp. All right, so what I've done is I've picked a point on the tables and it's just above where that bung is. Not touching the bung, but just above. And then what I've done is I've followed that around, followed that around. This thing's real clever, it like self, self levels and stuff after you've uh, picked your new point, which is quite nice. Uh, so I've, I've used that point all the way around. So yeah, we're just above where we want to be, right? And then if I spin it round again, Now it's been difficult, it's been difficult to try and, well I guess, somewhat get my head around what's happening. Christ, I guess <laughs> camera's making life a bit difficult. Right, so it's been, it's been pretty difficult just to get my head around how to do this, but like I say I'm pretty happy with how I've got it now. So I've got, I've got this laser line, this laser line, I've got it going around on all tables, right? And I've done it from both sides now, so I'm pretty happy with it. Is the tables are uh, sturdy, you know, they're not they're not wacky wacky. And when I put my spirit level on them, it babbles in the middle. So uh, ideal. I'm forever blowing bubbles. So I mean, I really do wish I was uh, doing the corner waiting now because I don't think you know will I ever get them in this spot again. It was amazing how much just a little bit of movement. Uh, made to uh, yeah to, to the table. This one looks a bit squiffy, which yeah, it's definitely on the piss that one. So didn't quite take that into. It. In fact, they're all a bit on the piss. I mean, I've been lifting them up with one hand and twiddling the uh, adjuster with the other. But at least I have something light now, so I can mark them up. I'm gonna put on my whiteboard. Someone tried to. You can't quite see, can you? Someone. It, it wouldn't rub off. Someone, someone did a rude thing immediately on my whiteboard and won't, won't rub off. I'm going to do a drawing so I remember where the uh, where the old girls should go, and then, you know, unfortunately, I'm not going to have use of any of these uh, measuring apparatus, any of these this uh, precision tools again. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to just hope to God that you know when I come back up in a couple of days that we can get it something like. Otherwise. It's going to be no good for our, our alignment or for our corner way in if we're on the piss. You know, it's not going to be a million miles away, is it? Which it's better than nothing, right? We're just hopefully I'll, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure I'll learn from the comments I'm posting this some some real easy ways to get things level or to cheat my. Uh, it, it can't be easy to try and cheat a flat floor because if you have a look at how much kits are for flat floors for you know proper corner waiting for motorsport peoples uh, it'll make your eyes water uh, big big money big money whereas this has cost me you know not more than the camera for sure but um you know not not tea bag not tea bag and considering it should last a long time and considering i've wanted something like this for a while then i'm i'm pretty chuffed with the whole setup so i'm going to do some marking up now just thought I'd show you that I got, got it to a nice spot, pretty chuffed with it, a lot of adjustment, <laughs> a lot of dicking around, but hopefully be uh, well worth it. I reckon that makes more sense than rear right and all that jazz, given that the car might be on front to back, back to front, depending on the old weight. Oh, well, hopefully all that was worth it. All right, all done then for today. Car's back in bay. Hopefully we've not wasted too much time. I'm gonna try and get a cheap laser level or something so I can double check it before I throw a car on, but hopefully it'll be all right, if not. Yeah. So next video then, I'll come back up. We'll get it suspension set up. We'll do the corner waiting or we'll have a go. I've never done that before. You know, I understand the benefits, but never thought it was worth the money. But now I've got the gear. I may as well have a go, eh? So, next time, MR2, corner waiting, I'll see you then. Uh, thumbs up for the new new camera. So it's, it's, got, it's got its flaws, but you know, it's trying. Uh, can on, can I do it? Yeah, have a go. It's, uh, 
it's not too bad, just it's tracking my face a bit there, isn't it? Yeah, All right, anyway, so see ya. Right, just to say, I'll get some fuel as well. Cheers, Ed. But yeah, we'll make sure some fuel's in the car when we do the corner waiting, otherwise, wasting his time, aren't we? There's only about three litres in it at the minute, so that's no good. So yeah, we'll get some fuel in it, find some way to balance my weight, do some cool corner waitings, then we'll see what the difference is in the race next weekend. Of course, it'll just be chucking it down, it's December the 13th, man, but you never know, might be worth it. Alright, bye.